Hello YouTube, it's TG Vanguard and today I thought I'd share with you the updated deck list for Luard. Now, since its last support in GBT 12, I believe, um, the deck's seen a lot of radical changes with what was uh, what we've what we've received in set 14. And I wanted to just quickly go through uh, the changes made. And uh, this is sort of like a build that uh, uh, Hesford, Andrew Hesford, helped me um, come up with. He pointed me in the direction of uh, some of the OCG lists and what they were doing. And uh, I basically came to this sort of like this basic uh, sort of build at the moment, which I'll, I'll be continuing to test. Uh, so let's go. Let's, let's just start with the grade freeze. We've got four. Drag four Luard. That's it. That's your grade three. Um, I've taken to calling this deck uh, Zul Luard because there is no backup, there is only Luard. Um, Luard's really good. Basically, like the deck is designed to accelerate your ritual like as fast as possible uh, to the point where as soon as you ride and you want to stride, uh, you just basically use his ritual cross ability to just put a card back in. Um, sometimes you need to counter blast, uh, but that's not always the case, and it's not always that bad because. Uh, you know, he's uh, you you know you do accelerate grade ones in the drop zone very quickly, so that is quite nice. Uh, onto the grade twos, we've got four Slaptail Dragon. He's basically the new Morfessa combined with like uh, Morian Spear, where in the deck it becomes a grade one of your grade four uh, Vanguard is Luard. Sorry about the, the Facebook notifications. Um, and he gains power as well as a grade 1 unit that's called when you're at Ritual 3. Um, this is quite nice, it basically also replaces the Granu that was in the deck before. Um, there's a lot of nice interactions, say if you were to call this and another grade 1 at the same time, they um, the Slaptail would gain its uh, power boost. And obviously this counts towards your ritual uh, in the drop zone while you're on a Luard Vanguard on grade 4, which is pretty much every single turn. So that's also very nice. So you get to build up those uh, power columns with uh, with Dragabus quite easily. Next, we've got Drag Fencer Dagda. Now initially I, I, I found this card to be a bit underwhelming. But uh, because it didn't have any sort of like power gain on its own, but it does something entirely different than uh, than just gaining power. It gives Luard a much more reliable form of multi attack, which is quite incredible. And I really, uh, I've come to actually really like this card, um, just because it adds that extra element. And when you are like Ritual Eight and you're going for your Dragabus plays. It doesn't matter that this is only a 9k base on its own, um, you know, because the, the Ritual Cross will give it an immeasurable power boost to the point where you don't need, really need a booster or like a howl out to boost its numbers, although that's always very nice. The Ritual 5, surprisingly enough, isn't as hard to get to as you may think. Again, it's because you are accelerating your Ritual so much with the way the rest of the deck is designed. Uh, finally, in the Grade 2s, we've got uh, Drag Wizard. Uh, Drag Wizard Gaunen. Um This is basically like the new sort of drop and draw for the deck, I suppose. There's sort of like a couple cards that, you know, uh, I've seen a few other builds run um, the main as well as like a two of, and that's fine, you can do that as well. Um, I, I've considered adding that in as well, just to add a bit more turbo to the deck. Uh, but at the same time, this is this can also fulfill what you need and at a uh, much less risk of having a 3k grade 2 vanguard, which can be a death sentence. Well, it is a death sentence, basically. Um, but, like, Gunan's really good as you, you know, as it, it fuels your ritual and it also, like, turbos you towards the ward. And, you know, since you're only running four copies, you need to be drawing a lot in the early game to get there if you don't see it first turn, obviously. Which, obviously, there's a risk of that happening. So we run a lot of grade ones in the deck. Obviously, we've got Esras, your recycling perfect guard, the best one, the probably one of the best perfect guards ever produced for for Vanguard. 
Uh, there's not really much. There's not really too much to say about SRS that hasn't already been said. So we'll just get onto the newer stuff like Drag Wizard Falmac. Now she's really good as again early game. She helps you get to your ritual as you can rest her. Uh, you can rest one of your ritual rearguards and discard her to the drop zone to draw a card, which is really nice. And the fact that your starter is a we'll get to the we'll get to the starter, but basically in the short term it is a ritual. Um so you'll always have a target for her, like turn one or turn two, which is really nice. Um and then in the late game she becomes an absolute powerhouse as you can recycle her with uh dragfall to stride and then call her back out, and then she just gains Seven uh, ritual five, she gains seven thousand power and resist. So, on those abyss turns against certain matchups like Kagero and Gear Chronicle and Narukami, where you're sort of worrying about um, them disrupting your multi attacks, use this as your primary attacker, and you know you won't have to worry about those pesky G gods uh, disrupting your plays because she is like basically one of the new MVPs. You run four abyssal still. The counter charge is still important. The deck's a lot more. The deck can still counter blast quite heavily, especially with some of the other cards in here. And it's also a matter of getting the Luard into your hand again. Again, you only run four, so you want to be accelerating, uh, accelerating to that point very early on. And it doesn't matter if you end up having to discard like grade ones or grade twos that you don't want to use early on, because you can put them back in. The priority of the early game is to get to this fast, and then you know have the ritual. So just play it like that, and you should be fine. Uh, you know, obviously the counter charge is still very good. Um, play two of uh, Daylad, Drag Lancer. She's basically the new Sword Breaker, Ritual One, Sword Blast One. When it's called from the deck to draw one, she's a seven K, so it's infinitely better than Sword Breaker. And she's a Ritual as well, so you can utilize her. Like, say, if you draw a dead in your hand, you can just ditch her with this. Which is really nice. And uh, there's not much else to say. She's a new sword breaker. And then finally, uh, well, almost finished with the grade ones. We've got knees. Now knees is an interesting. Uh, it's an interesting pit because it has a interaction with this, uh, which can help you enable your multi attack. So basically, for a CB two, uh, so you boost the first with knees, and then you retire the boosted unit uh, to draw a card. Then you attack with uh, dra with Dagda. Uh, retire the knees and call a fresh column there and that could be another knees if, if, if you want remember it gains 2k so like with another 7k that can make columns and then you know if you're on a if you're on abyss with like at, at like ritual eight that's uh, that's uh, ritual four ritual eight that's uh, that boosts up quite nicely uh so and it also helps somewhat against some of the link joker matchups particularly not chaos chaos is one of the harder matchups for this deck although you do have some ways around it uh, the G zone, I could probably, I'll probably switch around the G zone a little bit to help deal with the chaos match a bit more consistently. Uh, although that just needs further testing on my end. Um, but I quite like the theory behind these. Uh, I've seen other people run Semias, the, the sort of like the counter blaster called top two. Um, I, so I, 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 I understand the theory behind that, and you know, I'll probably, I'll, I'll probably test that as well. Um, if you're finding space, just like try and. Maybe cut one of these, or if you're if you're fitting in uh, the 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 in the mains, maybe cut these, or like maybe one of these and like one of this. Just play around with the ratios, and you you know you'll find something that will you know you'll find something that's fairly comfortable for you. So onto the triggers, uh, we've got Belialal. So, you know, it's Luard, why aren't you running <laughs> you know, you should be running this as a four off, there's no reason not to. Um this card is I I can't really say any more about this card that's already been said. It's like Esrus, it's like you have to run it. Um for Raven. I really like Raven. Raven's uh you know, this is the sort of like the remnants of the old uh, filtering strategy, uh where you you know you just basically Extend through your deck to the point where it's basically your triggers because obviously this goes back in the end in the end phase So you can basically just have standing crits for days uh, You know this builds your field so you can sack them with with uh, with abilities as well. So that's also pretty nice 
And it's just a it's just a really solid card, really. <laughs> well now it is. I remember when it first came out I was very underwhelmed. Um four draw triggers. In my opinion, draw triggers are probably one of the best ways that you can deal or you can sort of like more reliably deal with Nubatama, just because this punishes Rush in the early game is that, you know, this nets you a card, it's really nice, it, well, you know, you hit a draw trigger on the defensive when they're trying to rush you and their turn is basically over, it's, it's a lot easier for you to guard, you have an extra card in hand, you're netting an advantage off their commitment, which is quite nice, and then say on Rene, you just call this down, it's a 9k, and on GB3 it's 19k, so it's much easier to guard than, say, having to call one of these, or like one of you have a weaker card from hand. So that's why I still play more draw triggers, just because the Rene is quite a worry for me. Oh yeah, I forgot about one of the grade ones. Uh, so before we move on to the, well, I guess I'll just go for the heal triggers. It's the new Revenger heal that you obviously bind it to. You bind it and another one when you G guard to either soul charge or counter charge. You want to be going for the counter charge most times, but there are some scenarios where maybe the soul charge will help you out. Uh, so that's the last of the triggers. This is the final grade one, actually. I completely forgot about this. It's Light Element Honorary. Um, this is basically your out to other multi-attack decks. You know, this this uh, this won't do you too much against Nubatama because they could potentially retire it with the new grade two or Magu Tenbu before you get to use it. This is this can help you out in the Victor matchup. Uh, say if they are go if they want to go for their um, Pog Champ Victor play instead of the winning champ, then this is also an option. Again, you could also call if you're if you're worrying about the GB3, you can say call a weaker unit behind it as well. Like you can call a weaker unit to support, like maybe a Howl or something, just so this gets retired instead. So that's basically the last great one. And then on to the starter, we're running the new uh, Drag Wizard Vicro. And Vikrao is really nice because it obviously it's ritual, so it has interaction with Farmac in the early on. So you can just basically rest this whenever to drop Farmac to draw a card, which is really nice. Loads your ritual up, and then basically when this is retired through any ritual ability, I think any card with effect or cost of your card with the ritual ability, uh, you can move it to Soul to counter charge it. So it has a lot more flexibility than Bel Belial Owl in that aspect, as you can uh, get the counter charge off with say. Um, your Vanguard, but you can also do it through Ezrus or the Dabda, which is also very nice. So that's basically the main deck. Obviously, it's probably got a bit more work to do. It's a lot more refined now than it was before. I was, I think, I was with the previous versions. I was testing. It was a bit too caught in between the new and the old stuff, and didn't really have a solid direction. So I think this has a lot more of a this. This definitely has a a, a much stronger winning image. I, I would say. So, you know, focus with this, and, you know, you should be alright now. Just going to reorganize this, and we'll get onto the G-Zone. So, with the G-Zone, you run uh, the Aura Geyser pair. Uh, I'm considering cutting this, although I have found, I've still found in some instances that the extra two cards in your hand can make a difference, and it can help out quite a lot. Um, Again, that's further testing. I would say this is probably probably the more the most cuttable out of the out of the out of the rest of the G zone in theory. Uh, you could probably, there are probably a couple others that you could probably swap around as well, but I don't know. This is still good in my opinion. And then we've got the new uh, Dragabus Luard. This is like one of your main win cons, as you could just like create a massive field and just beat your opponent down with just. 20 plus, 29 plus columns, which are really nice. Um, and it obviously helps you build a field much better than, say, a lot of older Shadow Paladin uh, strides can. So that's also really good. The soul cost can, can get an issue, some can be an issue sometimes, but if you manage your resources all right, you, you hold on to draw triggers for when you need the soul and you need that extra power, so you wanted to boost up. Uh, so you wanted to boost up Dag Dagger, then that is totally available for you. Uh, and we've got two um, Drag Strider. He's sort of like, again, one of your main win cons, as you can pump him up and pressure with massive crit and the quad drive as well. You can also 
crawl a farm map behind it to support. That will put it at a minimum of 46k when it attacks, which is really nice. That puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. They will struggle a lot more than just a 32 um, with crit. And obviously the quad drive's important. The the cost of sacking two and discarding two can hurt sometimes, but generally, you know, if they survive the first, you've filtered enough and you've sort of like set your hand up enough to survive the net the turn after, they'll find it really difficult to stop the the second. Um, obviously, like this will this isn't as good in say the chaos matchup just because they'll have your board locked down and you can't really sack for the cost. So in that in mind, uh, putting a card like Spectral back in the deck, or say the Ritual Five. Well, the Ritual Five is probably good against certain other things, but um, the Restand for Spectral can help out in that regard. Um, so I am considering putting this back in. We're still playing two Phantom Blaster Diablo. This is purely for Geezy. Like No Seal Geezy is a thing. Is a thing. Well, other Gizeh decks are a thing as well, so you want to have a check for that, and this perfectly checks the deck. Like, you set up, you, you know, you set up this, you go in, you sack free, and they literally can't guard you because they don't have access to G guards. They can't guard anything from hand, and they can't retire their Zeroth dragons to actually, you know, get to the point where they can guard. So if they're at like four or five damage, like you just win that turn with this guy. So, you know. You don't want to get screwed over by Geese, so you want to uh, you want to play this. One Zeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima. Obviously, your Zeroth Dragon. Um, you want to yeah, this guy's very good, I'd say, um, just because you can set up a field where you're basically just swinging and swinging with your columns first, and then you like attack. You stack to crit and a stand, so you just power everything up. Or sometimes just a double crit can be enough. Sometimes, like say they're on three, and you just go in with the vanguard. You just make sure everything is hitting for lethal numbers and uh, and power, which can be quite threatening. Something I learned with it. You don't want to go into it like all the time, or maybe even as soon as this is like a. The scenario has to be right. You have to know your opponent's like on a fairly weak hand. They're on fairly high damage, so like you know the pressure of this is it's real so you don't you know you don't obviously you don't want to play this too liberally or otherwise that is where you'll probably lose uh so breeze just because you're still mostly a g oriented deck and you don't want the opponent to you don't want to you don't want to keep playing on a sort of a story game so if you see an opening just go into this i think yeah you, and you're still able to trigger the stride skill with this, so you're able to control your opponent's board as well, while, while plusing as well. So onto the G guards, uh, two plot makers, just because you know it's the most, it's one of the more reliable ways of getting just a solid shield on your field. Uh, we've got the Dark Veil vale Dragon, the new one. Uh, for a Soul Blast, you can gain 5k for every two Grade Ones in the drop zone. Uh, and that can really good. That's basically you know you can basically power up a lot stronger than that than this in that situation. That can really help in some matchups. Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure there must be something. Um, but yeah, this is just a solid card. It's, you know, it's it can help in, in the Messiah matchup in particular, where you know they're swinging for a very large harmonics, and you just play this Soul Blast, and you know you can basically like get up to close. Or like, or even block it entirely with this card sometimes, and that's really nice. Uh, the soul cost can be an issue, but like I said, if you manage resources properly, this shouldn't be too much of an issue. And then finally, Bronarch, just because she can load up your ritual early on, say if like you're forced to ride grade three first, but you have the heal trigger. Like generally, this is like your first G guard you play because you are running a lot of grade ones in this deck. So, um, just loading up the ritual in the drop zone can like just you know, it can just set you up really nice, and uh, that's basically the the Luard deck for uh, for set fourteen. Obviously, I'll be changing around a few cards. Uh, I have considering running the stand trick, the other stand trigger, the one that treats itself as a sack two and recycles itself. Um, I don't know exactly know what to cut, just because I prefer the draw triggers. If you were to put it in, I would probably say either cut like one or two of this, or like maybe like cut one one of these and one of these. For the two stand triggers, or you could cut two, 
for the two stand triggers if you're feeling uh, if you're feeling that's probably if, if you're feeling that's a better direction. Uh, the main is also a card you can consider playing just for that extra turbo. In that instance, probably either uh, you probably want to cut probably in like some of these. You can choose from those. It's like cards to cut to fit the, the mains into the grade two. Um, obviously, one of the key weaknesses of the deck if if you if you don't draw Luard even after all the turboing, then obviously you're in trouble. Um, and if you don't hit it off G assist, then you're also in trouble. So like, if you're damaging this early on, I would and you don't have it in hand, I would start to worry. Um, other sort of weaknesses is Drachma, obviously, because you only play four grade threes, so you're running the risk of um, being forced to ride down on the Drachma play. However, the theory is with this deck is you know you are still Luard, you still draw you still draw a lot of cards, so and you don't need to ditch anything to strive with this deck. So when you get Luard against those against the uh, Dragon Nation. Uh, against the Dragon Empire matchups that threaten Drachma, you just keep this in your hand and discard something else for your PG. Um, and that's basically how you sort of play around Drachma. Obviously that needs more testing in theory, but I don't know, that's just the way I think it should go. But anyway, that's the deck. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will be doing a Messiah profile soon. I'm waiting on a few more cards to come. Just because uh, my pre-orders got messed up a bit, so uh, we didn't get the I didn't get the, the the supply didn't get the stock they needed, so uh, I'm not I wasn't I wasn't able to get some of the key cards like Integral, and I'm still waiting on I'm still basically waiting on one Integral. I've got uh, ideally goes and one Integral coming in the mail. I've got my stock already, so I'm just waiting on one last Integral basically. Uh, but I'll come I'll I'll. Once I've tested with that a bit more and got the cards, I'll give the, I'll give the deck profile for the Messiahs updated. Uh, so for now, I'll just leave it there. Thanks, YouTube. We'll see you.